you have been told one of the biggest lies about healing and your inner child journey. And in this video, I'm gonna dive into what that big lie is. This is gonna get juicy, so make sure you stick around for the entire of the video. And so, with that being said, let's dive in. Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. If you are new around here, my name is Christina and I help empower people on their spiritual and healing journey so they can have a more fulfilling and purposeful driven life and know that they are worthy of their dream life. Now that's all out of the way, let's get on to the juicy stuff. When it comes to healing, healing our inner child, just healing from emotional past pain, there are some myths and some lies we kind of get told along the way or discover for ourselves and there have been so many that I have learnt on my own healing journey and I have been only on this spiritual healing journey for the last two and a half years now but I have kind of fast tracked my healing when you kind of give yourself permission to finally take that leap and take away the walls bring down your guards and you'll take off the armor you kind of fast track your healing and your spiritual journey and so this means along that way I have picked up and discovered little kind of tips, little lies that people often get told. And it's often quite common things that I hear people talking about, or it's things that people kind of have like illusions about, false fantasies, if you want to call that it that, about the healing journey. And basically the biggest lie people get told either through social media or their own ego attachment to outcome will tell them is that they'll one day be finally healed and everything will be vanished. We kind of have this kind of naive outlook uh, when it comes to healing. And people are being told that like one day they'll wake up in the morning and all of a sudden they'll be finally healed and they won't have to do any more inner work. And this is just not true. I'm sorry to break it to you. This might put a little dampener on your day. But when we have these attachments to these outcomes, because that's what it is, it's an ego's attachment to a particular outcome, it makes us kind of control the outcome and keeps us trapped in a particular mindset. It keeps us stuck in one kind of tunnel vision of way of thinking, and that is a linear way of thinking. And this is masculine energy. And so when we are in that logical linear thinking, we are just tapping into the masculine energy when it takes both the masculine and the feminine energy to heal. And I'm not talking about like feminine as in woman and masculine as in man. I'm talking about the energy that resides in both man and woman, it's an energy. So more of a feminine energy is kind of connecting to nature, of a more of a masculine thing is going to the gym and working out. And so these energies reside in us and the masculine, what it will do is make us focus on logic and our ego wants to stay safe and know logic and want some kind of particular order, structure, make sense of things. And sometimes when it comes to healing and your spiritual path, mystical things happen that your brain, your mind, your ego cannot make sense of. So it will do its best to look up and research because what happened to me during then? Oh my God, what, what did I just experience during that meditation? And you'll research and research and research of what that could have meant or what you experienced. Because trust me, I have been there during meditation, during my inner child healing meditation. I experienced this kind of huge energetic light expansion come out of my body and if you haven't seen that video yet where I talk all about that just check out this video here and I talk all about kind of a mystical experience I had with my inner child and so when we are in the masculine and in our ego we try to make sense of all of these things so this means when it comes to healing and the biggest lie you have been told is that healing is a linear order, a start 
and a finish and then one day you'll be finally finished and be all healed and you'll like skip around and it'll be all peace and love and light and just fairies and all of that and that's not to say we can't experience moments of bliss, love, peace, inner peace. But when we are trapped in the logical way of thinking, what we're doing is just restricting ourselves from experiencing more deep connection with ourselves on our healing journey. And what you were doing is constantly be in the trap of chasing that healed version of yourself in order to have that outcome of the healed version of ourselves because healing is not linear. I like to describe it as like kind of a spiral of evolution. We kind of spiral up and we have our moments of ascension and the moments of descension, the moments of expansion, the moments of contraction. And so this means when we are having those moments of contraction, we're going back down, it's just about going inward again and seeing what layers need to be shed in order to come back home to ourselves, to our true nature, to our true selves, because we already are whole and complete as our true self. It's only trauma, beliefs, the ego, the 3D reality matrix that programs us and blocks us from seeing our true nature and experiencing that. So when we have able to see that the healing journey is non-linear, we might go feel like we're going backwards and we'll go then we're growing and um Get, taking huge leaps and letting go of old beliefs we're letting go of the past pain we're allowing ourselves to feel but then we have the moments where we're reactive again we've picked the low-hanging fruit we've gone for that reaction and that is okay because we can empower ourselves and realize we're just human and this human experience is evolution we are always growing and we can grow and change from the mistakes and grow from when we have got off the rails there's nothing wrong with falling off the rails it's part of the process of healing it's anger is part of the process it's okay to be stuck in that rock bottom anger stage of your healing for some time it's not healthy to stay there but we can't bypass the anger so it's about accepting that we can go back a bit and then because when we go back then we take huge leaps forward so this is the biggest lie you ever get told in the healing community that maybe one day you'll be finally healed come and join my program and i will heal you rather than empowering them and just being the mirror so when we release that way of thinking because that is another belief then we're able to discover that there's no logical way of healing it's non-linear we free ourselves from the belief that i have to have this outcome one day and yes it's good to have a goal that's not to say you don't have goals and aspirations when it comes to healing like you want to have a goal of just releasing uh, resentment towards your mother for example like along that road you will experience some deep anger and you'll feel really reactive towards your mother you feel like you're coming from your inner child wounds again but we remember that this is okay this is part of the ascension and descension process the evolution of the healing because breaking free of this non-linear thinking will help you to kind of let go of the outcome and just enjoy a process even though a process of healing seems like linear and does seem to be like well it's not i'm not going to enjoy it it's going to be fucking painful that's not to say feeling is not a painful experience and healing our wounds and stuff is emotional pain but we can stop the resistance 
and the suffering, the torment we cause ourselves when we let go of this attachment, this ideal version that one day we'll be finally healed. So this is your permission. I'm giving you permission right now to stop with the whole beating yourself up when you've been reactive or you're not that healed version of yourself yet because we have to uh, just let go of ego attachments and false illusions to really come back home to ourselves in the present moment. And when we're in the present moment, what does that mean? We're in the body. We're in that feminine energy and we're, we're connecting to our bodies. We're con regulating ourselves. So then we are able to process emotions in order to heal so we feel lighter. Instead of having this attachment, well, I must be healed. One day I'm going to wake up and I'll be healed. And this is just creating more suffering to yourself. It means that you lack something, so you chase something. Me and my healing journey, the biggest change for me was when I was able to actually accept more of my femininity, more of like masculine, the divine masculine in my life because I have some deep wounded masculine energy within me. I, I do hustle way too much. I do work way too much. And so when I begin to kind of accept these energies and be with these like energies, then I feel more at peace. <laughs> I don't resist those, it, that's in me, this energy that's in me. I come into my body with those energies. And if you want to discover if you have an inner child wound, I have a free inner child wound quiz and this quiz will tell you if you have an inner child wound and what your dominant wound may be. I just wanna make this disclaimer, this is not a diagnosis of any kind. It's simply a free, fun little quiz that will help you to on the, take some steps to begin to heal any wounds you may be holding because you'll be sent a personalized free report that will dive into each wound and what steps you can begin to take in order to heal your inner child. So if you want to discover your inner child wound now, click the link below in the pinned comments. And if you want to dive e deeper into healing your inner child, check out this video next. And I will see you in there. Much love.